Uh, definitely a pleasure to um, speak to you and um, definitely feeling the new album. It's amazing. It's an incredible body of work. Thank um, you. So we've got a few questions, if you don't mind. Uh, the first question, obviously, is um, regarding the name Sarok. Uh, what, what, what is the origin of the name? Where did it come from? My name, Sarok? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's, it's multi-layered. Um, when I thought of what I wanted to be called as an artist, I didn't want like my actual name, but I wanted an element of my name to be represented. So when I was little, people used to call me Sa or Sa Sa. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna put the Sa in there. And then um, when I rhyme, I'm really kind of aggressive and I'm hard. And so I was like, okay, rock. Like that like kind of symbolizes how I spit. Um, and then, so I started thinking about it a little bit more and I was like, oh yeah. And then, you know, I consider myself you know, a gem, a semi-precious stone. So the rock could like symbolize that. And then uh, in my studies, I started studying like um, Egyptian hieroglyphs and symbology. And I found that there's a, a hieroglyph called Sa that means protection. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna incorporate that. Like, you know, I consider myself a protector of culture, a protector of people. So like that protection is like perfect. Um, that, that layered meaning is like perfect for the name. And then probably like, um, maybe a months after I started like rhyming under the name Sarak, I found out about Sharak, who is one of the first female MCs in hip hop, um, the funky four plus one more. And, um, I was like, okay, so now knowing that I'm going to add, you know, that layer to my name as an homage to her, you know, this trailblazer in hip hop. Man. And speaking of um, early female trailblazers, uh, are there any other artists that you look to as early influences to your, your style or the, the way that you rhyme? Not necessarily style, but there are many um, artists who are women that like I remember looking at and being so inspired by and just like captivated by it. And that was Queen Latifah, um, Lauren Hill, of course. MC Light, I remember seeing Ladies First and just like, ooh, like, wow, like, this is exactly, you know, this is, this is my thing. Like, these powerful women um, talking about women taking the four and, um, you know, being leaders and being outspoken and that's, that's super dope. And I'm, I was super young at the time, but seeing them wear, like, their African, like, crowns and stuff like that was just so dope to me. Um, and then at later, when she came out with UNITY, like, that song just really spoke to me because it was definitely you know speaking to the experience that we um as women have to go through you know especially like growing up and like the hoods and stuff like that the things that are tolerated in terms of how we're men interact with us so like that song was really really dope but lauren i remember that being a really pivotal pivotal moment in my um listening of hip-hop and like just loving that album continuing like having that album on a loop you know, have her having such a strong and articulate voice. Um, so yeah, like those are the, the women that I kind of look through. And then also um, Ladybug Mecca from Diggable Planets. Like I loved her softness um, and then just what she brought to the table in terms of uh, Diggable Planets. But yeah, oh, Bahamadia, so many. <laughs> so many, so many legends, man. But I think what for you specifically, for me, what, what, what stands you apart from a lot of these legends is, is how prolific you are. And, and your body of work and your catalog. And um, uh, to my understanding, this, this new album is, is your 10th full body of work, officially? 10th album? Um, you know, it's, I've, I've, it's kind of hard to keep up because I have like 13 projects out, but like some are EPs, some are mixtapes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like my 13th official project. Um, but as far as full length, album like it is my third like actual album okay. but i have 13 projects right right okay and what and what keeps you so so driven and so inspired to create at such a high level um you know i i was i i started as an mc like right after i discovered i could do it mm. so it wasn't like you know, you hear so many stories of hip hop artists like, ah, I've been rapping since I was eight years old. I've been rapping since I was nine years old and I always knew I was supposed to do this. I didn't. I was at a, a moment of, you know, 
a crossroads in my life where I didn't know what I was going to do. And I, I kind of stumbled upon this hip hop thing. And I was nurtured within an activist and independent hip hop community that allowed me to kind of grow and discover who I was as an artist as I was performing, as I was creating music. So I kind of used creating music as a way to improve upon my skill set, you know, just real life experience. And plus I was working a nine to five and I really wanted, <laughs> I really wanted, I used it as an outlet. I used my creative expression as an outlet. And I wanted to use this path to create a career for myself outside of that nine to five world in which I, you know, supported myself with. So. Right. So would you consider this album, The Sharecropper's Daughter, as your kind of like your coming out party on the global stage? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, because we've been grinding so hard, um, just ourselves and creating a nice uh, platform. You know, we actually had um, been able to tour like internationally and, and tour nationwide based off just, you know, our own grind and movement. But this is our first, this is the first album we've done and we did a mixtape with uh, Rhyme Sayers, but since doing a joint venture with Rhyme Sayers and being with the label, it's the first official album. Of course, they have, you know, millions of followers, a super loyal fan base, and it broadened um, the exposure. So yeah, it's almost like this is my first album because the people who didn't know about me before forever are now, that that was their introduction to me, which is, you know, the probably you know, the most notable song off of the album. Not, not probably, it is the most notable song off the album. So millions of people have now discovered Sarok, you know, 12 years after, or 10 years after, you know, I've been putting out all this music. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I think part of the adventure is going back and seeing a lot of your earlier work and how incredible um, the lyricism and, uh, you know, the, the, the standard of MCing is. And um, I think one of the most... Um, uh, startling thing is is looking at the the guest list on the album and seeing names like Black Thought, Soul Williams, um, yeah. Styles P, Chronics, like globally respected, legendary artists, and obviously, and then uh, none of them are, are, are coming half hearted on the album. Like Thought is literally, you know, giving you his best. And, and what was that experience like to have this these these levels of artists feature on your project? It was dope. I mean, to be able to have, um, you know, artists that you really admire on your project to contribute to this thing that you feel so close to and just help to develop it and help to brighten what you're trying to do and, and focus what you're trying to do is a beautiful thing. But when you both have, you know, mutual respect for one another and you're excited about creating with one another, that just adds another layer, another dimension to you know, what's created that, that experience, the vibe of the experience. So it's, it's really dope. It was really dope. You know, I got a chance to create the song with Black Thought in the actual studio, everybody else, the collabs were done remotely. Um, so that was an experience in and of itself. You know, he's so cool. That's big, big bro, you know, you know, uh, uh, along with, you know, it being like this nerve wracking kind of, uh, <laughs> experience you know uh, just those two days in which we're in the studio writing like I, I feel like I, gr I grew so much you know being able to watch him work yeah and obviously him being a long-standing supporter of your work and bringing you on stage to open for the roots that right. you know that's that must have been such a, a massive experience for you while she was developing as well right yeah absolutely because you know the roots are just incredible like their musicianship is precise, pristine, like they are a well-oiled machine, but their um, precision doesn't take away from their creativity. Their, their, their creativity and precision are as matched. Um, and being on stage and the experience of rhyming while tubas and, you know, guitarists are circling you, you know, mm -hmm. dancing while playing an instrument Mm -hmm. is an incredible experience. It's, it's really just mind blowing and it really just takes you over. And I literally study them, you know, mm -hmm. while I'm watching them, like, okay, this is the level to which I want to take my skill. I want to take my intention when it comes to creating music. It's really about elevating the culture. And I think that they've done that in a way that, you know, um, few can say that they have. Yeah. 
And with this album, such an incredible body of work, and which I personally think is one of the albums of the year. Now, um, I mean, give us some, some insight into the, the process of putting such an amazing project together. I mean, how, how long did it take from conception to, to execution? Uh, we started two years ago. Um, you know, it's really, it's really a matter of, of figuring out what stories I wanted to tell, which ones were too personal to share, you know, and creating songs and then figuring that out and editing that thing. But, um, you know, just kind of telling my producer, Soul Messiah, like what I'm looking for. And sometimes he can already kind of anticipate, you know, what kind of vibe the song, the, the song would need or the album would need. Um, and then adding musicians and instrumentations onto that and then coming back to the song, listening to it, seeing, hmm, this might need some harmonies and adding that to it and scaling back if need be and just figuring out um, what the progression is going to look like, you know, kind of moving songs around and, and making sure the process of the storytelling is fluid and cohesive. Mm, fantastic. And what has been the experience of, of, of releasing an album during a, a global pandemic, which obviously is completely different to the, the, the um, release schedule of, of a standard album for you? Um, it, it's been interesting, you know, that the, the release date was scheduled before like everything um, popped off. So we had planned for that. But I think that um, it, it's crazy to say anything would be to our benefit during such a fraught um, time, but I think it worked to our benefit that people were at home and people were wanting, were waiting for content. And people have been waiting for this album quite some time since Forever came out. You know, my last album that I dropped was in 2016, you know, my last like kind of body of work, full body of work. And, um, and so uh, it helped that people were at home. They were expecting it. They want they were wanting to sit back and listen to music that would be um, inspiring, that would speak to the times. And it just so happens that this album was speaking to a lot of what was happening. Um, because just as a black person in America, this is not, this, this is not new to us. What's hap what was happening in, you know, with George Floyd and the protests and a lot of the political um, cartwheeling that was going on and you know all that that's not new to me as a black person so you'll find themes those kinds of themes throughout you know my music and it just so happened the timing of it worked out perfectly people were looking for a piece of art that kind of articulated what they were feeling in the moment so it was it was you know perfect timing it was it was indeed and um i know cool and i know um this is a final question so um i know it's relatively still early in your career but what would you um, want fans to, um, what would you would like the um, Star Rock legacy to be as, as one of the, the figureheads in, for female MCs right now? Um, just being authentically me and speaking to the issues of the time, creating music that is substantive, creating, writing lyrics that actually mean something and say something. Um, really, at the end of the day, I want people to be inspired by what I put out. I want people to be, um, allow pe it to cause people to think. And I want everybody to have someone that could potentially amplify their voices, you know, and kind of speak to what they don't have the platform to say, you know, speak to the things that they're feeling. And I can hope, I can only hope that in some way, you know, I do that in telling my story in the, in the only way I know how to. Incredible. Um, Sarak, I want to thank you so much for taking time to kick it with the connoisseurs. And we want to continue to wish you most success going forward in your career. Thank you so much. Have a good thank evening. You too. Take care. God bless.